Okay, I want to show you what some opioid molecules look like. So opioids are uh, usually small molecules that bind to the opioid receptor, and I have the opioid receptor here. Um, it's this dark green part. It's uh, on the surface of your neuron, specifically at junctions between neurons, that synapses. And part of it uh, is sticking outside. Uh, at this end, and you, you see in here in the middle, there's a little opioid drug in this receptor. Okay, this is outside of the neuron. And then on the inside, there are these other uh, colored blobs here, proteins, they're G proteins. And when an opioid binds, it releases these G proteins. They're able to move around then on the inside of the neuron on the surface, and they cause changes to how the neurons signal. Calcium, they affect how calcium and potassium ions flow through the membrane, and they also affect gene expression within the neuron. Um, okay, so we're going to take a look at some of the different opioids that can bind to this receptor. So first, let's take a look at morphine. Uh, so I'm going to bring up morphine here. Let's see. So morphine, and let's hide our receptor. So here's morphine. It's this tiny little guy. I'll make him bigger. Okay. So this is what morphine looks like. It's a pretty, it's got a pretty complicated ring structure. There are five different rings here. Three there. To here, they're all fused together. This is a very hard molecule to synthesize for humans to make synthetically. So you get it from opium poppies. Um, even now, it was figured out how to synthesize it in the 1950s, but it's too complex. So we don't make this synthetically, it's grown in poppies. Um, so morphine is a pain, very effective, very strong painkiller. Um, it also is a addic very addictive drug. Uh, it acts in a weird way. It doesn't block the pain. People who take opioids report that they still feel the pain, but that it doesn't hurt. Um, okay, so that's what uh, morphine looks like. Uh, let's take a look at fentanyl now. Um, so I'll show you that. I'm going to hide my morphine. Oops, let's hide morphine. Come on, morphine, go away. Okay, so here's fentanyl. There have been a lot of uh, opioid overdose deaths in recent years, and this drug is partly, is supposed to be uh, one of the main culprits. Uh, this fentanyl is synthetically made. You can see it's totally different in its molecular structure. It's got three rings, but they're not fused together. And this is much easier to, to synthetically create. Um, this is also 100 times more potent than morphine, so only a hundredth of the quantity of this is needed to get the same effect. Um, further, there are derivatives of this. So you just add a few atoms off of the side to make other things like carfentanil, which also have, these other drugs have been, derivatives have been responsible for opioid deaths, and carfentanil, for instance, which is just different in a small number of atoms, is 10,000 times as potent as morphine. All right, so those are two examples of drugs. Um, let's uh, take a look next at what what is your body? These opioid receptors are naturally in your brain. Uh, what's the natural opioid? Well, there are endorphins. The word endorphin um, is kind of a contraction for endogenous m morphines. So it's what it's essentially morphine-like molecules that are native in your body. But these endorphins don't look anything like morphine. So let's look at one of them called beta endorphine. I'm going to show that, and I'll hide our fentanyl. So here it is. And what these, uh, many of these endorphins are, are uh, parts of a protein that have been clipped off in your body. So this is a peptide part of a protein. It's 31 amino acids long. It's a chain. Uh, let's see. I'll show you the backbone. Uh, so these proteins have a long backbone chain. So now I'm showing it as this tube. And this structure here, unlike those fentanyl and morphine that had sort of a, 
um, a fairly um, well-defined structure. This is pretty much random here. In fact, I made this model and it's just random. Um, so um, let me just show you, uh, we're gonna take a look at the two ends of uh, this beta endorphin, endorphin. I'd like to be able to tug on them. So I'm gonna uh, do some little thing, magic here so I can tug on them. I'll change my hand controller and then uh, let me find one end here and grab an atom. There we go. Let me pull on it a little bit here. Okay. And then I'm going to bring the other end, where's the other end, over to the same vicinity. Doo -doo. Come on. Let's drag him on over to here. Okay. So the two ends of this beta endorphin are kind of key parts. Um, so uh, let's see, let me hide my, hide my ribbon. I was showing you, so we see all the atoms again. And at one end, there's a specific sequence of amino acids. It's tyrosine, that's this guy right here. here let, me, let me bring this up a little cl closer for you to see. Tyrosine, a glycine, a glycine, and a phenylalanine. Those four amino acids, and there are a whole bunch of different endorphins that are like peptides like this, but they have this same uh, sequence at the end, tyrosine, glycine, glycine, phenylalanine. But that's not the only important part of this. At the, uh, the, the, um, how, how potent this endorphin is has to do with the other end also. And it's not completely known how these two work or even how these two bind to the, um, the opioid receptor that we were just looking at. But somehow the two ends are involved. Okay. I want to show you one more uh, opi opioid-like molecule. Um, it's naloxine. If you get an overdose, overdose of opioids, this is the molecule that's used to, uh, to revive you, okay? Overdose of opioids will su suppress your breathing to the extent that it can kill you. Um, so le let's look at naloxine, the antidote. Uh, so I'll hide beta endorphin. And here is naloxine, and it may look very familiar to you because it's got those same like five fused rings as morphine. And if we compare, let me bring back morphine. Okay, so morphine's the blue one. Naloxine is the red one. Here, I'll make it bigger. You can see that uh, in many places, in most places, they're identical. There are a few uh, there are a few differences you see over here. Let's see, uh, down at this end, there are a few more carbon atoms here where the red, the orange is longer than the blue, but the, it's almost the same as morphine. So um, there are many derivatives of morphine. There's codeine, that's also in, op in poppy, opium poppies. Uh, but what's interesting is this, this uh, orange naloxone um, actually, uh, is what, what cures you if you have an overdose of opioids. And what happens is it can bind to the opioid receptor, but because of these small differences in the atoms uh, between this and morphine, um, it doesn't activate the opioid receptor. So those G proteins at the bottom that are triggering the effects don't actually detach and have their effects. All right, thanks for listening.